Hello everyone. Come back to my channel. I am Dr. Sharda. In the previous video, part 1, we have seen the introduction of the lesson The Never Never Nest. Now, in this session, we will see the explanation of the actual text. Let us start. As we have seen that, the couple Jack and Jill were living in a villa bought on installment. Aunt Jane visited them after a long time. Here the play goes on. And this is the launch. Charming, charming. Such a cozy little room. And such pretty furniture. We like it, you know. Handy place to sit in and listen to the radiogram. Oh, have you got a radiogram? As well as a car and a piano? Why? Of course, Aunt Jane. You simply must have a radio set nowadays. And it's so nice for me when Jack is away at business. I even make him move it into the kitchen so that I can listen to it while I cook. Sit down, Aunt Jane. You must be tired. And we have shown you everything now. Jill showed their living room. Aunt Jane exclaimed, saying it warm and comfortable. Jack told about radiogram. Jill said that she listened to it while cooking in the kitchen when Jack is away at business. Jack offered her to sit as she might be tired. What do you think of our little nest, Aunt Jean? I think it's wonderful, my dears. The furniture and the car and the piano and the refrigerator and the radio. What's it? It's wonderful. Really wonderful. And we owe it all to you. Yes, Jack, that's what worrying me. Worrying you, Aunt Jane? Yes, that check I gave you for your wedding present, it was only 200 pounds, wasn't it? I did not put 2000 by mistake. Jill asked Aunt Jane's opinion on their home. Aunt Jane told that she felt wonderful about home, car, piano, refrigerator and radio. Jack gave all that credit to Aunt Jane. Aunt Jane told that she was worrying about the same, whether she gave him 2000 pounds check instead of 200 pounds as a gift. Why? No, Aunt Jane. What on earth made you think that? Well, that's all right. But I still don't altogether understand. This house, it's very lovely. But doesn't it cost a great deal for rent? Rent? Oh no, we don't pay rent. But Jack, if you don't pay rent, you will get turned out into the street. And that would never do. You have Jill and the baby to think of now, you know? No, no, Aunt Jane. You misunderstood me. We don't pay rent because the house is ours. Yours? Why? Yes. You just pay 10 pounds and it's yours. Jill said no, she did not do so. Then Aunt Jane questioned them how they, they are paying rent to such a costly home. The Jack told that he did not pay rent. It was their own house. Aunt Jane expected Jack not to trouble Jill and the baby. You see, Aunt Jane, we realized how uneconomic it is to go on paying rent year after year when you can buy and enjoy a home of your own for 10 pounds and a few quarterly payments. Of course, why Mr. Tenant when you can be Mr. Owner? I see. Yes, there's something in that. Even so, you must be getting on very well to keep up a place like this. Oh, he is Aunt Jane. Why, only last year he had a five shilling rise. Didn't you, Jack? Of course, that was nothing. Really, I'm expecting ten this Christmas. Jack said that paying rent year by year is not a profitable. They could be owner of the house by paying ten pounds down payment. Then, why to be Mr. Tenant? Aunt Jane questioned them about the pay of Jack. Jill said that he got the increment of 5 shillings. Jack was expecting 10 that Christmas. Jack, 
I have just thought of something. That car, is it yours? Of course, it's ours. All yours? Well, no, not exactly all. How much of it? Oh, I should say the steering wheel and one of the tires and about two of the cylinders. But don't you see? That's wonderful thing about it. I don't see anything wonderful about it. Aunt Jade got doubt whether the car was theirs. They said yes. When inquired how much of it was their own, they said one steering, one tire and two cylinders. Jill felt it wonderful about it, but Aunt Jane did not. But there is Aunt Jane. You see, although we could never buy a car outright, we can enjoy all the pleasures of motoring for a mere five pounds down. And the rest by easy installments, I suppose. Exactly. Exactly. And what about the radio? What's it? Well, that's the. And the piano? Well, of course. And the furniture? I am afraid so. I suppose all you own is this leg. Jill felt that it was wonderful to enjoy the pleasures of riding it with the payment of just five pounds. Aunt Jane exclaimed again saying installments. She understood that all the furniture, radio, car, piano, everything was bought on the same installment scheme. Well, no, as a matter of fact, it's that one. And the rest belongs to Mr. Sage, I suppose. Ye yes. Well, I'm not going to sit on Mr. Sage's part for anyone. Now tell me, how much do all these installments come to? Well, actually, actually to seven pounds eight and eight pence a week. Good heavens. And how much do you earn? As a matter of fact, um, that is six pounds. When Aunt Jane said only one leg of so sofa belonged to them, Jill pointed to the another. Aunt Jane supposed that the rest of it belonged to Mr. Sage. She stood up saying that she won't sit on the sofa that belonged to somebody else. When she inquired how much it costed about and how much Jack and Jack answered it costed seven pounds eight and eight pence per week and he earned six pounds. But that's absurd. How can you pay seven pounds eight and eight pence out of six pounds? Oh, that's easy. You see, all you have to do is to borrow the rest of the money for the payments from the Thrift and Providence Trust Corporation. They are only too glad to loan you any amount you like on one note of hand alone. And how do you propose to pay that back? Oh, that's easy. That's easy too. You just pay it back in installments. Installments? Aunt Jane exclaimed that it was meaningless and how he was spending 7 pounds 8 and 8 pence out of 6 pounds. Then he answered he had to borrow the rest from Thrift and Providence Trust Corporation. And Jill told that they were glad to loan amount for one note of hand. And when Aunt Jane questioned how he would pay that back, he again said installments. Aunt Jane clapped her hand to forehead and screamed installment. She sank back into the chair weakly. But after realizing it was somebody else so far, got up shrieking. Aunt Jane, is anything that matter? Would you like to lie down? Lie down? Do you suppose I am going to trust myself in a bed that belongs to Mr. Sage or Marx and Spencer or somebody? No, I am going home. Oh, must you really go? I think I would be better. I will drive you to the station. What? Travel in a car that has only one tire and two thing miss? No, thank you. I will take the bus. Jack asked Aunt Jane if she is well, if she would like to lie down, but she refused to lay down on a bed belonging to others. She, sh she said she was going home. Jack offered her to drive. 
to the station but she refused to travel in a car which had one steering one tire two cylinders and she wanted to go by bus well of course if you feel like that about it now i am sorry if i sounded rude but really i am shocked to find the way you are living i have never owed a penny in my life cash down that's my motto and i want you to do the same now look here is a little check i was meaning to give you anyway suppose you take it and pay off just one of your bills so that you can say one thing at least really belongs to you thank you aunt jane it's very nice of you there now i must be going i will see you to the bus anyway aunt jane wanted to go by bus jack agreed to aunt jane aunt jane told without hesitation that she was shocked to know about the way jack and jill were living their life her motto was not to owe even a penny to anyone in her life she handed over a little check to jill and hoped if they could pay at least one of their bills and own it jill thanked her and jack accompanied to her to the bus goodbye aunt jane and thanks so much for the present goodbye my dear oh nurse i want you to run and post this for me i will look after baby while you are gone certainly ma'am jill and aunt jane bid each other jack and aunt jane went out jill exclaimed looking at the check she hurried to the table addressed an envelope enclosed the check and the bills inside it she called the nurse and asked her to post it for her nurse handed the baby to jill and went with the envelope after some time jack came back well she's gone what a tatter still she did leave us a bit on account how much was it 10 pounds that's great we can pay off the next two months on the car with that i'm afraid we can't why ever not you see i have already sent it off for something else nurse has just gone to post it well that's all right who have you sent it to dr martin dr martin what on earth possess you to do that there now you are going to be angry with me jack felt relief that she went he said it was irritating and asked about the amount on the check jill said it was 10 pounds jack felt happy that he could pay next two installments on the car but jill said they can't she had sent it to something else nurse went to post it for her when asked whom did she sent it to she answered it was sent to dr martin jack questioned her why did she send it to him jill told cryingly that he would get angry on her i am not angry but why waste good money on the doctor doctors don't expect to get paid anyway but but you don't understand understand what why just one more installment and baby is really ours jack said he was not angry but asked why to waste money on doctor when they did not expect to be paid jill answered in a sobbing way that he did not understand it if they pay just one more installment and the baby would become their own she took hold of the baby in a miserable way and the lights are off that's the end of the play thus the play ends ironically though it look exaggeration jill got realization with the words of aunt jane hope you understood the play and enjoyed it it gives us a moral to spend according to our resources and not to fall into the trap of borrowing and spoil our happiness we should be content with what we have thank you for watching this do like share and subscribe thank you